I'm out here at the Bell Road Show, and I'm with... Dave Mazak. Dave, what would you bring with you tonight? A 1960 Buick Invicta convertible. How long have you had her? I've had it about nine years. Okay. Did you do the work to, your, to I, it? I did as much as I could possibly could. Uh, the body work and the paint I had professionally done. Okay. Give me some details about the car. What's in there? Well, it's got a 401 cubic inch engine. They call it the nail head. And they called it the nail head because the valves are really small like the heads of a nail. So consequently, it got the name. Um, the sticker you'll notice is Wildcat 445. The 445 refers to the amount of torque that the engine had at 445 pounds of torque rather than square in or cubic inches. Right. Um, something unusual about it, it's got a push button start. Really? So you turn the key to on and then you push the gas pedal and that starts the car. It's the last year Buick used that in you, 1960. Was Buick the only one that used it back then? I believe they were. Okay. What years was it on? Um, you know, it was through the 50s and then it, they, they stopped using it in 61. Okay. So the 1960s, 1960 model was the last year for that. That's a good and piece of knowledge. And if you look at the um, instrument, the, the speedometer, you're actually looking at a mirror. Really? Yeah. The speedometer lies flat where you can't see it. And the numbers where you're see looking now, that's actually a mirror. You're seeing a mirror image. Wow. And you can, you can tilt the mirror back and forth for tall drivers or small drivers. And this is how the interior originally came? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now another kind of interesting feature about the car it was designed after the B-52 bomber. Really? So if you look, well the back tail lights kind of give it away. They look like, uh, um, it looks like the back end of a jet. And then the fins. Oh, okay. But in the front, the, the B-52 bomber had these engine pods that hung from the wings of the, of the plane. Okay. And they were dual engines, and if right. you look at it, they look just like that. They hung underneath, right? Right. Okay. And then the, the controls in the dash are like ball and stick, would be similar to what you would see in a plane of that vintage. Okay. Does it go as fast as one of those? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I had to ask, you know. You've done your, you've done your homework on the car, you know your facts, huh? Well, yeah. Do you know what color paint this is? It was called Chalet Blue. Okay. And it's an original Buick paint. Um, we added, when, it, when we had it painted, added a little bit more metallic and some pearl to it. But the, the color is the same as what you would see in 1960. She's pretty. I love that color. Now, the fact that that matches like that, it's such a nice... The wheels? Yeah. Yeah. And it came that way too, huh? Yeah. Yep. Very nice. You plan to make any changes or is she perfect? You know, it's kind of a work in progress. You're always trying to improve it and you're always trying to fix things. Cause right. It, it's they're never. It, it's an old car. And you know, they're never and done, right? They still break. And you find the part that's nicer than the one that you have and you pick it up and put it on. I see how much detail is on the car on the mirror behind it with the sun. Ah. Uh, Tri Shield. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Another, uh, 1960 was the first year that Buick used the Tri Shield logo or emblem. Really? So that's a, kind of an unusual feature, too. Well, thank you so much. You can go on U.S. Classic Muscle Cars and check out the video of your car and all of tonight's cars. Great. Thank you. Thank you.